Yo. Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and as you can see behind me, we're gonna get ourselves a sugarcane farm set up. So I hope you guys are ready. So today in our hardcore world, we're getting a little bit redstoney, just a just a tiny little bit. Um, we're gonna be utilizing a lot of that redstone, but we're also gonna be using a lot of our iron. I should probably uh, get some more iron cooked up as we uh, continue our little journey here. What I ended up doing during the live stream, right? This is uh, this may seem a little bit overwhelming, but we did some cool stuff. We did some awesome stuff. Well, it's it's not automated just yet, uh, but I don't want to automate it today. Let's let's talk about this a little bit, and then I'm going to show you the beautiful time lapse of how we got here. Um, as you can see, I now have a cleric here. We ended up removing that so we can get a cleric. I did go ahead and get this guy all the way up to Ender Pearls. So we can now just trade for Ender Pearls. Like we have infinite amount of Ender Pearls there. And you can see these guys trade for pumpkins and melons. So I ended up making Dim Melons Industries. That's right. This is Dim Melons Industries, even though the majority of it is pumpkins. And I had just harvested this, harvested this a little bit ago. Now, what I want to do is I also want sugarcane, um, which I also want in our farm island which is going to be just above here, hopefully. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this time-lapse going of all the stuff that we did during the live stream. It was about four hours long. It was a lot of fun. And we built this giant melon farm slash pumpkin farm called, don't forget this, called Dim Melons Industries. Anyways, let's get on with this. Of course, this is still a manual farm. Um, now, I could make it semi-automatic by putting a bunch of pistons underneath here, but we are kind of limited on the amount of iron that I have. We will get there, though. I would actually love, love to have this thing fully automated. Uh, maybe not as large of, a, of one, because even a small one can get quite overwhelming when it's automated, because honestly, this thing can put out some melons. Let's just put it that way. Um, but I want to get a sugarcane farm set up, right? Um, down here, I do have a fella that will trade me emeralds, this guy right here, for paper. Um, which is really nice because it gets us more mending books. And then as we go, of course, we'll have, uh, hopefully villager halls, uh, where we have more villagers in this area, maybe even added over here in some form or fashion, maybe against the walls of the melon farm. Um... So that way we can trade. Now, trading is kind of crazy. You can see I already have golden carrots because this is honestly one of the best foods that you can get in hardcore or in Minecraft, in, in my opinion. It's free food. You don't really have to worry about it too much. This was just from a single harvest here. Um, this is all the melons that we have. We can sort of see and get an idea of how many emeralds we can get from what we currently have. Now, if I max out the trades here on this one, it's only going to help the trades on this fella. And you can see now we also have melons. It only takes three melons to get some emeralds and melons are pretty good. We should probably put some more melons over here because it only takes three of them where it takes a lot more pumpkins. But as you can see, the pumpkins, they regenerate right back. So we have 55 like and, and it's still maxed out, but like it's going to unmax itself soon. And that's already enough just from one harvest enough to get a mending book. So, pretty crazy, <laughs> and we still, I mean, we just got to wait a minute for this to go back to normal, and we get experience as well while we do this, or we could just use it on the cleric, you know? Um, we have a mob farm that is generating rotten flesh up there, and so the cleric, we can just trade all of our rotten flesh to this guy, so rotten flesh equals emeralds, in my opinion. The way I look at it, it equals emeralds or glowstone. Of course, we can buy glowstone here, which glowstone in the nether that we have is just not okay. Uh, which we will go adventuring. I still have yet to go adventuring into the, the nether, but I want to get some of these automated farms. Now, this guy is a little expensive on the name tags. The name tags are, are pretty expensive, but at least they're manageable and we can still get name tags without needing to worry about dungeon loot. So that's always great. Like villagers, this is the part that I really love. 
I love the, the ability to have a daily task in Minecraft, something that I can do and I can get rewarded for it. Like this, getting emeralds for this feels like a reward for some task that I have set up to be able to do. And it feels really good. Now, I want to get sugarcane set up, but this thing I want to set up and have it automated. There's a few ways we can do this. I want to use observers and carts, I do believe. Plus, carts are probably going to give this uh, this island here, this mountain, a little bit of sound uh, that is going to be introduced into this. And I just don't know how big I want to build this sugarcane farm. Um, I would like it to be, you know, somewhat sound. Like, I, I don't know. I, I want it to be large enough that it generates enough to make it worthwhile. Um, but to get up here, I've got to figure out a way. Maybe a ladder for right now, and then we'll use a, sh a water chute. Maybe take a ladder up this mountain here, going right up this way, and that will lead up into the upper bits of the mountain, and then we can harvest away and use wood like we did here to sort of carve this up. I think that should work. I did use TNT to clear this out, so... But I'm kind of scared of using TNT up there. I think I've come up with an idea for really what I want to do here. Now, for me, there's nothing more satisfying than breaking the sugar cane. So instead of building a farm, an automated farm, which I know a lot of people would probably do, and I have no problem with having a small automated farm set up somewhere else. But for this, I'm kind of going with the manual theme, but I do want a way to collect this because picking up all the stuff, that's where it gets a little bit rough. So if I can get a hopper cart system under here, that would be great. That would be the best thing. So we can just run around, pick it all up. And then we know that the cart that is there is going to go around picking everything up that we missed and then bringing it and depositing it at a deposit station where we can, of course, pick up all of our stuff. Um, and then later on, we might be able to automate some part of it. You know, we'll figure out what we can do there. But I do like the the, the aspect of of manually harvesting, just like the, uh, the the pumpkin down here. Like I've done a lot of automated farms, but man, I really do miss the manual farms, but I do get to show you guys probably one of the most efficient ways at making a manual sugarcane farm. It's gonna require a lot of holes and uh, well, we better get digging the holes. Well, I guess before we start digging the holes, we should probably set up an area for which we actually are going to have the sugarcane farm exist in. Um, and kind of know that. So I placed all this grass down here, but I think this is honestly going to be the area where the rails are going to exist. Um, so I definitely need to clear out a lot of the dirt. And then the next layer up is where we're going to have everything. So what I can do is I can go through here and define where our rail system, where our cart is actually going to uh, basically ride on or, or where it's going to exist at. And I want to avoid um, corners and stuff as much as possible. Like, I don't want it to be off and be able to be seen, basically. So I got to go through here, and I'm going to basically clear out everything that's here. And that's how we're going to determine where I want everything to be. Because we have to make a really, really windy track. And that can be kind of difficult, actually. So I have my rails, and it did take a little bit of time. I had to go mining for a little bit more iron. But... This is working. It's not the greatest thing in the world. And if I do need to do some maintenance, of course, I can probably get down here and tunnel and go into a one by one and be able to manage this. But I, I think this will work. Um, the minecart may struggle with picking everything up uh, on its first pass, but um, I do have a, a depositing area here. This basically is how you can set this up. Uh, basically, the minecart will come up here. If there's anything in its inventory, let me just go ahead and 
just toss like some cobble. We'll, we'll toss this whole stack of cobble in here. And if I push this into its funneling system, it should be able to make it up there. It's going to stop and then deposit everything. And then once it's done depositing, it should push itself back off once it's done. That is the thing. <laughs> there it goes. And then it's off and it's going out to collect everything again. And then it will repeat this. Um, I have it set up here to loop. Basically, it'll run through here, loop, and then put itself opposite again. And it'll run through the whole loop twice um, instead of it like going all the way over here and depositing again. Um, so if it doesn't pick everything up the first time, it should definitely get it on the second pass and vice versa. And it should continue looping like this should continue running always. Um, there are a couple spots where it does get a little bit like um, slow where I probably want to fix that. But at the moment, there's not really much I can do about that. Um, I'm out of gold. <laughs> I'm basically out of the resources to make any more of the rails. Now, let's talk about how we're going to set this up and how are we going to get water in here, right? Like water, that's going to destroy the rails. It's going to tear everything up, right? No, there's actually a good way that we could uh, set this up. So that way we really don't have to worry about ourselves uh, falling into the water and we can just like, walk through and harvest and we don't have to worry about anything. To do that, we can either use a stair or a slab. I'm pr probably going to prefer a stair. Um, and let me just go ahead and demonstrate what I'm going to do. So to set this up, uh, let's imagine that this is the rail right here. And right here is our, um, like our actual uh, water surface or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so what all we got to do is we have dirt surrounding this and we place water onto the stair and you can see the water does not drop below. Um, so you can use this or the bottom half of a slab, but I'm more likely to walk smoother over this, uh, than I am a slab, a slab, you will drop down into the water. So this is going to be the best way to do this. And all we got to do now is get ourselves a bunch of dirt placed. <laughs> A lot of dirt placed above our rail system. So now all I have to do is basically line this entire area with dirt. And uh, then we're going to decide on the pattern for which we're going to go with. Um, there is a very, very nice pattern that will pretty much cover this entire area. So we don't have to really think about it too much. We just need to, you know, just I basically need to show you guys what that pattern is. Once you understand it, it's pretty easy to replicate. And then uh, it's going to be. Yeah, just a really, really nice manual sugarcane farm, which will some, somewhat manual. Like, I mean, I guess we do have this down here, which is kind of nice. Now, what I have lined up here pretty much is where I want the sugarcane to start. Um, and we need to find like probably one of the larger areas to pick. I think this corner is probably going to be a pretty good one. And basically, we need to see to just poke a hole in the ground uh, and then go from there. Um, so when you place a hole in the ground, it's almost like an L shape like this. And you're going to run that L shape all the way down just like so. Um, and then on the next L shape, just basically think of this as a square right here. And so we have water here, water here. Basically, we're going to have water here as well. So there will be a hole. And then right here will also be a hole. And you can continue that L shape as well on here. Basically, you go hole two blocks and then move to the right and that right there will create you a nice pattern for your sugar cane and it's going to be the most efficient for a sugar cane farm of this type now once you get to the edge we're going to be careful we don't want um of course water flowing off the edge so uh we can we'll see we'll see how this goes i'm probably going to just like if it ends up like this i'm probably not going to place water right here right i'm gonna just continue it and uh yeah, I have to pretty much repeat this pattern all the way through and then we'll place down our uh, our stairs. Now it's time for the incredibly fun part, right? I've got to uh, make sure I well, for one thing, make sure I don't have any of these flipped upside down when I fill them. But we have to fill each one of these with water. Uh, at least we can see the water in them, which is a good thing. But yeah, we have a lot to, to pick up or lots of water to place, which uh, it's going to take just a tiny bit of time. Wow. Take a look at that from here. Wow. So much work has been done to this now. Oh, I'm just absolutely loving it. Now, the only thing we have to do 
is fill this bad boy with sugarcane. Now, I'm gonna tear this sugarcane farm down that I've been using since we started. Um, and I actually haven't really been harvesting it much. Uh, just because it's kind of hard to harvest. There is a skeleton. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's just kind of hard to harvest because, as you can see, the items just kind of drop every now and then. It, it just, yeah, it becomes such a pain sometimes. They fall in the water, then you gotta go back and backtrack and pick it up out of the water. So yeah, we're probably gonna use this area for more stuff, more cool things. Might even, I don't know, later on put an automated one over here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this area yet. It's just kind of open now, and I'm sure I'm gonna end up closing up this river or this stream that's back here. Just don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this spot. If we walk up here, you can just see, man, we completely converted this mountain into something special, and I'm super happy with what I've done with it. Like this, ah, oh, it's perfect. It's definitely perfect. Now, here's where I'm gonna try my best to plant uh, sugar cane anywhere that is plantable currently. So anywhere that has the ability for me to place it, I'm gonna try and place it. And then I just have to fill this whole area in. That's gonna be the fun part. Well, just right here at the end, I ran out. I, wow, that farm out of all of that still was not enough to fill all of this. Um, and just imagine now once we harvest it, this is gonna be so fun to walk around and just punch everything <laughs> in, in our path. That's why I really like these manual farms, um, you know, with a little touch of automation down at the bottom. Now, later on, of course, we probably will end up making an automated farm, depending on how much we need sugarcane. Um, but I think the next few episodes, we're definitely going to be working on going to the the nether, I think. I think the nether is going to be a big project for us. Um, I need to go get blaze rod. There's a lot of stuff to get. And uh, man, I am super excited to get into brewing potions and getting into all kinds of cool stuff. Now, I think during the live stream, of course, at the time of this video, the live stream is already passed, at least the one I'm talking about. It's kind of weird how I do this. Um, the live streams are kind of, I, I, I record the video like this video, and then I will be live streaming after this video. Um, so if you're kind of confused whenever you come to a live stream, you're like, oh, I've seen something. I mean, you're kind of getting a little bit of a sneak peek at the latest video, but anyways, um, I think I'm going to be doing definitely after this is going to be a lot of just harvesting, just farming. Uh, we're going to be farming some trees, um, doing a lot of uh, manual farming, getting some things going and uh, also probably building up our enchants, getting make, making sure everything has mending on it that I want mending on, making sure we have all the proper enchants that I want before we go hunting for netherite. Yes, we're going to be going netherite hunting soon. Um, and yeah, just getting prepared for that. Because that is what's next. We're going to be spending some time in the nether. And uh, usually end up spending a lot of time in the nether when you're hunting for netherite. So of course, as always, I want to get a beautiful thank you sign on our sponsor tree uh, to thank today's sponsor. And that is going to go to Crispy Critter. Thank you so much for your amazing patronage. Let me actually go ahead and lower that. There we go. Thanks, Crispy Critter. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patronage. If you're interested, by the way, in becoming a Patreon yourself and you want to get a sign in the world just like that, be sure to check the description down below. You'll find a link to my Patreon along with several other useful links down there, like, I don't know, like the advancement tracker and all kinds of other cool stuff that is listed down in that description. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. I do put a lot of work into these videos and I would really appreciate it. So guys, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.